Hi guys, I'm Mike. And I'm Stephen. And this is Indie Fanatics, your home for IndyCar content with weekly podcasts and feature videos. Welcome back to the channel and to another feature video and to another Who Is feature video. Our last Who Is video was about Joseph Newgarden. Thanks to Haley for that suggestion. Today is all about Maya Shank racing driver Jack Harvey and this recommendation came from Katie. Remember, if there is any driver, team and topic you'd like us to look at in the future, let us know in the comments below. But for now, we ask, Who Is Jack Harvey? Wait, 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 what's this music? Just go with it, Stephen. Wait, no, what are you doing? A long time ago, on an island far, far away, a boy, Jack Harvey, was born, 1993 to be precise, in a settlement called Basimore in Lincolnshire. This boy would have driving skills like no other had seen and would rise to compete in IndyCar. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You're jumping ahead! And what's with all this Star Wars music? Well, Jack is a big Star Wars nerd, so I thought we'd do a whole kind of Star Wars thing. No. No, no, no. You're getting distracted again with world theories. Jack is not a Jedi. Fine. But he would look pretty cool with a pink lightsaber, but I guess we should carry on. Ye let's. So, Jack Harvey started his career in karting and began competing at the age of nine. In 2006, he would win the MSA Super 1 British title by just a single point and the Kartmasters British GP in the ICA J class. On the back of this success in 2007, he would join the Italian Marinello team in the newly created KF3 category. He won four trophies that year, including being the European champion. In Jack's last year in Carton in 2008, he joined the Birrell Motorsport team in the KF2 category and became the Asia Pacific champion. Pretty impressive stuff from Jack, but here's where your career really starts when he progressed to Formula Racing, entering the Formula BMW Europe Championship with Fortec Motorsport in 2009. In his first year, he would finish seventh with one win, two poles and a fastest lap. And this would make him a member of the BRDC Rising Star Initiative. In his second season, he would become runner up of the series, scoring seven victories, eight poles and 13 podiums. He would actually lead the championship ahead of the current Formula E driver Robin Frins going into the last round starting from pole in race one but was pushed off the track by Dam's driver Javier Tarancon and Frins would claim the title. Formula 3 or should I say British F3 was Jack's next step up the motorsport ladder. He competed in the series for two seasons with Carlin finishing ninth in his first season and claiming the title in his second year with seven wins and 12 podiums. After that success, Jack stepped up to GP3 and he would race for ART in the series and retained his Racing Steps Foundation back in. He would finish a respectable fifth in the series with a total of two wins and a further podium on top of that. Jack decided his next path on the ladder wouldn't be in Europe though, as he would head across to the States and join Schmidt Peterson Motorsports in the Indy Light series. Jack would immediately impress finishing second in his first season, which won him acclaim back home as he was awarded the BRDC Earl Howe Trophy for being the top performing British driver in North America. In his second Indy Light season, he would also finish runner-up again with two victories at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The first, a dominating win on the road course, starting pole, claiming fastest lap and leading the most laps. The second was on the Oval in the Freedom 100, a pretty special victory for any young driver to claim. It also makes him one of the five drivers who have won on the IMS Oval and Road Course. After his success in the Indy Light Series, Jack's Indy career has been all about steady progress and gaining more experience and opportunities each year. His debut came at the 2017 Indy 500 with Michael Shank Racing partnered with Andretti Autosport and would compete in a further two races that season, competing for Schmidt Peaks and Motorsports. From 2018 onwards, Jack has been partnered with Meyer Shank Racing as they edge their way into the sport with 
each season competing in more and more races till this 2020 season where he would compete in his first full season in IndyCar. Jack has been an incredible consistent performer in his first full season, ending the championship in 15th. They could have been higher with an unfortunate incident with Hinch in the season finale at St. Petersburg, dashing his hopes of another top 10 finish, which he has had six of this season and career best sixth in race two of the Harvest GP. Jack has been a driver who has had to bite his time for his chance, but with a strong first full season and a team who believe in him with lofty ambitions in Meyer Shank Racing, it is going to be fascinating to see how his career unfolds in IndyCar over the next few seasons. But that's it for today's video, guys. We hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about Jack Carvey and his career today. Thanks again, Katie, for the suggestion. And remember, if there is any driver, team or topic you'd like us to look at in the future, comment down below. And an exciting announcement for next week's video. We are lucky to have Dan from F1 Reviews on the channel as we debate which series is better, IndyCar or Formula E. No prizes for guessing which side of the argument we're on. And Stephen, if they're new around here and haven't done so already and don't want to miss out of any of our great content coming up, what can they do? They can like, subscribe and ding that bell. Ding it! So for now, you indie fans, keep bracing!